Hello, good evening. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you for thank you, Michelle, for that warm welcome. Um, like she said, I'm Emily, and I lead the product team at Spoke. Um, so before we get started, thought I would ask you guys a quick question. Um, love for you to raise your hand if there was one time this week where one of your coworkers asked you to help them, asked you for some information, and what you end up giving them was a file or a document or a link. Anything? Okay. And how many of you have shared that same file or that same document or that same link more than once this week? Yeah. And for many of you, that's really not what you get up in the morning to do. That is not your favorite activity of the day. That is not what gets you excited and inspired. Um, and so one of the problems that we are solving at Spoke is how do we enable employees at companies to get the help that they need without having to turn to their coworkers and make them do that searching and that repetitive um, uh, answering for them. Um, because we believe that at the end of the day, if you can spend more time, less time searching for information, that is just more time that you have to actually do that creative, productive, valuable work that you love. Um, so to make that a little bit more specific, let me figure out how this works. Aha. Um, to make that a little bit more specific, here's some specific problems that we are looking at. So number one, coworkers should be collaborators, not human search engines. See, most companies don't have a problem around knowledge documentation. In fact, that documentation is everywhere. You have that in your sketch files, you have that in your Envision prototypes, you have that in Google Docs, and in Dropbox, and in Slack, and in email. See, that knowledge is out there. The problem is access. And when it's out there and it lives in five million places and there's 10 different versions of it, you can't figure out what you want. And when you can't figure out what you want, you do what? You turn to your fellow coworker, you turn to that person next to you and you ask them for it. And every time you do that, you are turning your coworker into a human search engine. And we think there's a better way to do that. Um, and so with Spoke, the next time somebody is slacking you for your company logo, the next time somebody is asking in general what is for lunch, instead of a human taking time to send you another link to that menu for Zesty, because it's still the same link, Spoke will do that for you. Second problem we're tackling, look, we know nobody wants to file a ticket. It's just a quick ask. So I'm just going to swing by or just send you a quick DM or send you a quick email, and it'll be fine. But the problem is it's usually not a quick ask. It takes a little while. And more importantly, it breaks flow. And for so many of us in this room, getting into flow is actually really, really precious. And breaking that is costly. The other problem that this creates is that when you get asked specifically a question, it puts the burden on you to help, on you to answer. But by and large, that question around where is that latest asset or hey, can you send me that latest product spec can be answered by more than just you. And so not only is that person looking for help now bottlenecked and waiting, you can't ask coworkers for help. And so what we want to figure out is how do we actually enable teams to help each other, teams to help other teams, and teams to help employees at companies. Number three, things get lost in Slack. So when we talk about collaboration, there's one core aspect of it, which is actually the relationship aspect of collaboration. And one really quick way for relationships to break down is to drop the ball on things. That's when the finger pointing starts. That's when you say, well, I didn't know this thing had changed because marketing didn't send it. And marketing says, well, I didn't know about that because sales didn't tell me. And then you say, well, but look, I DM'd you three hours ago in Slack. And it's nobody's intention to drop these things, but that's what happens. It's what happens when we communicate and we have expectations of real-time responses and everything is flowing. It creates a mental burden for you to stop and write those things down and track it. And again, wouldn't it be great if there was software to help you solve for that? And so because these are the problems that we spend a lot of time thinking about, we naturally think about how to design Spoke in a way that actually facilitates collaboration. Um, and the way we do it is, of course, across many, many teams. And so it creates a slight nuance to this. Specifically, we're thinking about how to design for cross-functional collaboration. 
There are, let's say broadly to simplify, two types of software products out there. You have single product, single function tools like Sketch for designers or Salesforce for the sales team or GitHub for engineers. Um, and these are tools that are tools of the trade that you are in day in and day out, but by and large, it's one function. And then you have tools, for example, like Intercom and Spoke. And these are cross-functional tools. And Intercom and Spoke happen, one, to be companies that I've worked at, but two, are both companies that are support tools. It's just that Intercom is largely supporting an external audience, while Spoke is supporting an internal audience. And let's take a look at what that means. So let's start with Intercom, a tool that I think many of you in the audience have probably heard of, if not have used. This is a very common user journey through Intercom. You land on a website, as many of you have, you will see that little widget pop up, and there's a nice, friendly salesperson on the other side asking if they can help you answer questions about pricing, about features. And as you're engaging, oftentimes you're leaving your email address. That email address goes into Intercom and can be used by other teams like marketing to then send out automated marketing campaigns. And later on, hopefully, you become a customer and you have questions about the service or the product that you purchased. And Intercom's promise, their vision, is that when you ask that question, you don't have a customer support agent on the other side asking, hello, what is your name? What is your order number? What is your ticket number? Because the promise is all of that data lives in one place. It is in your user profile. And that enables the customer support agent on the other side to actually spend their energy giving you great service, not trying to track down your ticket number. And at Spoke, we do similar things internally. So let's say that you're a hiring manager and you are super excited because you finally closed that design candidate. Um, and so you want to figure out how do you onboard and welcome that new employee to your team. Here you can ask Spoke for things like, how do I onboard a new employee? And if a team like HR has put that into your knowledge base, Spoke will automatically return that for you. Great, you now have more information. But if you've ever onboarded an employee, you know that's not the only thing you have to do. And so within the same tool, you can now actually make a request to HR and have them go through the process of paperwork and onboarding to get that employee into your system. And they, of course, can't do it all alone. And so they can pass that request over to IT. So you have very different teams interacting, but also sharing that same information, that same context, which is that new employee that you're bringing on board. Um, and so this is how we then enable multiple functions to work together. So now that we've established a bit of what cross-functional uh, tools are, um, I would love to share with you some of the lessons that we learned in designing this. Arguably, the single most important principle that we follow at Spoke is that of default open. And when we say default open, it means how do we think about designing not just our tool, but our entire business to enable people to see things, act on things, and be included in the product. So I will talk through visibility, actions, and pricing over the next couple of slides. Uh, visibility. So Spoke is a system that is made up of requests, these questions, and knowledge. And what you have, and, and sorry, in traditional ticketing systems like ServiceNow, which is the biggest one out there, uh, a regular employee like me or some of you uh, wouldn't be able to see the requests made by other people. You would only be able to see your own tickets. And so one of the most controversial decisions that we made is to actually open up this to everyone. So everyone in Spoke can see everybody else's requests, except for the ones that are specifically marked as private. Um, and so what I have here is a totally undoctored, unphotoshopped screenshot of Spoke using Spoke. This is our web app. And what you're looking at is our requests panel, or our requests list um, across our entire company. Uh, that top one, you, is me. Mike is actually sitting in the front row. And you can get a sense of how we're using Spoke. We've got questions for design, questions for office management, questions for engineering. And what really ends up happening when you open up visibility is you invite people in. And we have seen so many times that new employees at companies join Spoke and they hop over to the All tab. And it allows them to see what other people at their company are asking for. And because collaboration isn't just about the tool that you design, it's also about the culture and the environment that you're facilitating. And we believe that a culture that is open, that is helpful, that learns, is one that is more conducive 
to collaboration. Um, the actions that we take. So, you know, we pushed some mental mo model buttons by making everything visible. Um, the next thing that we did is we actually allow anyone at a company to reply to requests and to add knowledge. So let's say that you have a friend from the San Francisco, sorry, from the New York office visiting San Francisco, and they want to know how to book a conference room. Pretty common question. What you can see here is that they might hop over to the SF channel on Slack and ask how to book a conference room. And because someone in the office management team kindly put together a knowledge-based resource, they can get the official answer. But this is in a Slack channel so everyone can see it. And it turns out that there's a whole bunch of tribal knowledge, right? Like there's the conference rooms and then there's the conference rooms, the ones that are either not listed or they're really some sort of supply closet but function pretty well. And because we've opened up Spoke for everyone to use, that information can get added to this request and not only that, it can actually get saved to the knowledge base. So the next time someone is coming over to San Francisco and asking about conference rooms, this tribal knowledge also gets shared. Because at the end of the day, we don't believe that the best answers are the formal ones. We think that actually lots of people can contribute and lots of people can help. And by making actions open, what we've done, we think, is to expand the surface area of collaboration from the people who are, whose jobs are strictly to support you and collaborate to opening up to the much more casual collaboration. And finally, pricing. Some of you might have been a little confused why pricing was on the list uh, because many designers don't feel like they get to influence pricing. But I would actually argue that pricing is the single most important decision that you as a company and as a product can make to actually influence whether your product is set up for collaboration. And so here on one side, we have a super common pricing model, Zendesk, which prices per seat, in this case, per customer support agent seat. And on the right, we have Spoke, that is pricing per employee. Why do we do that? Well, our belief is when seats are expensive, they are rationed. That is why at our company, I don't have access to Salesforce, and I don't have access to Asana. And so when someone tries to collaborate with me by sending me some amazing customer notes in Salesforce, or when someone tries to collaborate with me by adding me to Asana, forget collaboration, I can't even enter the thing. So you've spent all of this time designing great interactions and great flows and a great experience, and guess what, your users can't get in. And that has so much to do with how your product is priced. Now, pricing, of course, factors in many more things than just collaboration, but that's just an example to say, when you think about how to design your product, it extends beyond the pixels on the screen, right? It's a really holistic design. And so to summarize, for us, default open is a really important principle. But maybe even beyond the fact that it is a principle, it's something that we use to think throughout how we design our business and our product. Um, and so something that you can take away as well is this. Is the product that you're building and is the business that you're building something that creates more value by giving people more control or something that creates more value by giving people more freedom of access? And once you know what side of the spectrum that you're on, then it's really just about being consistent all the way through. If you are better off being default closed, then perhaps most of the things in your app should be restricted in terms of the actions that you can take and private in terms of the visibility that you can see. And in that case, it very well might warrant a pricing model that is more expensive. But if you're trying to design a product that is open and collaborative and inclusive to casual users, then not only would I encourage you to think about making things visible to people, enable people to do more things. And finally, ask some questions around how your product is priced and see if there are ways that you can actually reduce the friction there. Um, I think many of you in this room have probably spent time thinking about some of the questions that we have raised. Would love to chat with you afterwards. Um, and of course, we are hiring designers and PMs and engineers. So if you like the problems that we're thinking about and if you've enjoyed um, the way we think about those problems using our principles, definitely come find me after this. Thank you.